as we kick off 2024, I know that this audience has grown immensely. And for that, I have so much gratitude. Thank you so much for everyone who listens to this show on a regular basis and shares this message with others. I thought this would be a great opportunity to reintroduce myself. So to start the 2024 year, I am going to be rebooting the episode From My Heart, Meet Me. This explains who I am, why I do what I do. I cry through this recording and I really, truly share the deepest part of my heart with you. Thank you again for being a part of this show, a part of this experience, and a part of this dream that has been Reproductive Rebel for years long before I ever picked up a microphone. Hi, I'm Adrienne Irizarry. I'm an Eastern medicine practitioner who is passionate about women's health and helping women live their best lives. My goal is to put you in the driver's seat of your health, offering period solutions for a symptom-free life. Statements made in this program are for educational purposes only and not intended as a substitution for medical consultation or advice. We do not claim to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases. This podcast is inclusive and welcomes all gender identities. The focus of the program is on biological function and we will use the term women throughout, but it is referencing physiological and social challenges for biology, not identity. Come as you are. I am happy you're here and welcome all performances of identity. I hope you find something helpful in this show. Welcome back to another episode of the Reproductive Rebel Podcast. This is going to be a bit of a vulnerable share. The audience for this program has grown so much since its inception, and I am so grateful to all of you for being here and for investing in yourself, investing in learning more about your body, taking the time every week to spend a little bit of time with me. It means more to me than I have words for. And because this audience has grown so much, I will probably cry through this a little bit. So I'm going to warn you, (laughs) but I think that it's important for you to know me and what drives me. And I've talked about it a little bit in the very first episode of Reproductive Rebel. If you had a chance to listen to it, I did allude to a bit of my story and episode nine of season one, I told a bit about and really in the wake of losing my daughter, a bit about how the moon essence story began, honestly. But I feel like I should introduce you to me and that with the audience at the size that it is now, it's a perfect opportunity to let you all know who you've been listening to every week and share with you that you're not alone in your struggle. So my journey, just like so many of yours, started with a lot of bumps in the road. So my period when I was a young woman started at the age of 12. And within the first year, I started having lots of symptoms, classic case of endometriosis. And the symptoms kept getting more and more disruptive in my life. I started you know, wondering if I was going to miss days at school, or I probably should have taken the time and missed some days at school, but I was that A-type perfectionist that just absolutely didn't want to miss a thing. So I would push myself through and to the detriment of my health as I look back at it. But I just so badly didn't want the fact that I was a bleeding body to be a vulnerability. So I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. By the time I was 14 or 15 years old, my symptoms were so disruptive that my doctor put me on birth control, like so many girls in my age bracket and that have come after me. There are so many of us that share that story of birth control. And birth control made me feel depressed. It stole some of my light. It made me gain weight, which was really hard on my mental health at times. And see, I told you I was going to cry through this. (laughs) But I think that it's really important 
for you to hear my authentic voice as you listen to this program. So much of it is spoken from a clinical perspective. And I specifically chose to do it that way because I wanted to build credibility with you as my audience so that you would take what I was sharing with you and be like, yes, this is a trusted resource. I want to put it into action. But there is a human side to this practice that really drives the work that I do and why I am so passionate. Like at the opening of this show, I say that I am passionate about women's health and helping women to live their best lives. It's not a tagline. It's not something smooth that rolls out of my mouth because that's what I should say from a marketing perspective. I literally live and breathe those words because I have been through the trenches along with a lot of the rest of you. And I have had a heart attack on birth control at the age of 25. So that medication that was making me gain weight and feel gross about myself and started stealing my light affected my choice of partners. It affected my cognitive skills. It affected my moods. And I never made the association with that at the time. And then it all culminated in what the doctors called a cardiac episode, but I had a heart attack at the age of 25 on birth control. And I wish I could remember the name of the doctor in the ER that night because I would write her the longest letter for saving my life. And I realized in that moment that there was so much I didn't know about my body that for as open as my mother was about sharing things about body function and expectations. And, you know, I was really blessed to have a mom that sat down with me and talked to me about my period. And not everybody has that. But for as woke as I was, so to speak, (laughs) at the time about my body and what was going on in my body, I never saw this coming. And I never associated anything that I was experiencing with side effects of birth control. And it was a huge wake-up call for me. It was a huge wake-up call that there was more going on than I realized and that If I was questioning these things and if I was experiencing these things, like I survived, I lived through that heart attack because I was meant to do something to give back to people in this world. And so that was one very big catalyst at the beginning of my journey. And a year later, I got pregnant with the most beautiful miracle who is at the time of this recording almost 12 years old, and I wouldn't trade her for anything in the world. I had a really tough postpartum experience. So a lot of times as first-time moms, we don't know what we don't know. And I had had friends that had had babies, but like we just don't talk about the gas while we're pregnant and the heartburn or the sleep disruptions or, you know, I think about that Freedom Mom commercial that got taken down a few years ago because it was such an accurate portrayal of the postpartum experience and every woman who had ever had a child was saw themselves in that ad and the bigger cultural conversation was like, oh, this isn't appropriate. And they took it off from being aired. And I thought that was such a travesty because there's so much about the postpartum that we don't talk about. And there is shame around the mental health side of it. There is shame around, am I going to get my body back? Is my body supposed to do this? I feel totally pulled under and overwhelmed and exhausted. And, you know, I don't have all the tools to support myself well, you know, and you don't know until you get into it. 
And I see it a lot with my first time moms. I was that first time mom and it affected my milk supply and I struggled to breastfeed my daughter. And that was really hard emotionally as well as physically. When I stopped breastfeeding, I started bleeding and I bled for six months straight. And there were no interventions in the Western model that could solve my problem. And I ended up needing to step into a new job because I got laid off right around that period of time. So see all the same life stuff and challenges that you all face. I wasn't a clinician at the time. I had a passion for Chinese nutritional therapy, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with it yet. I just knew that it was really fun being able to help friends and family around me with little things that, you know, their digestion didn't feel good or this didn't feel good or whatever. And like, I could step in and be like, hey, have you tried this or this? And like, they would try it and they would feel better. And that gave me so much joy to be able to support people that way. And so, When all of Western medicine failed me in this postpartum experience, I turned to Eastern medicine because it was the only place I had ever found wisdom to solve some of my issues. And within just a few visits between herbs and acupuncture, the bleeding finally stopped. And, you know, six months I had been back and forth with my allopathic practitioner. They had put in an IUD, which decided to push itself out. So if you've been listening to this program, there's an episode about IUDs. Like these episodes of this program are literally coming from what I see in my clinical practice, but also what I've seen in my own life experience. I am not a practitioner that sits over here on a pedestal with all of my shit figured out. I have lived it. I have walked through the same trenches that every single one of you have and possibly currently are and feel hopeless and helpless. Like, well, okay, so my body is betraying me. Now what? I used to feel that way for a long time. I felt like my body ran the show and I was just along for the ride. I couldn't plan anything fun. I had piles of paper products stuffed in every zippered pocket, purse, jacket pocket you could possibly imagine because I never knew when that shit was going to sneak up on me and I knew that the moment that it did it was going to be a flood. I started tracking my basal temperature so that I had some idea and it wasn't just a shot in the dark when my period was going to come because my body had become that irregular. So back up to my postpartum experience, I found the answers I was looking for after interventions with my Western medical provider. They wanted to put me on birth control. I kept saying to anyone who would listen, hello, have you not seen that I had a heart attack on birth control? Like, do you really think that's a good idea? And Lupron and an IUD were my only options. And the IUD seemed to be the lesser of the evils at the time. But I didn't have a really versed conversation with my practitioner about all of the potential risks around it. It was just here. This is going to be localized progesterone. This should help you stop bleeding. And guess what? It didn't. It didn't make the bleeding stop. It added to the pain. I was like in a constant state of cramping and my body tried to push it out and I had to have it removed because it was literally coming out of my cervix because my body was working so vigilantly to push it out. So all of this to say, I've been through all of those same frustrations that you have where you're like, okay, I'm going to try this thing and I really hope that it works only to find that it has more side effects than it is doing good for you. And then you're frustrated because you don't know where else to turn. And that was my experience in my postpartum acupuncture and herbs. And I just want to shout out to Kelly Sherman for being such an incredible human being because she really saved me during that time frame. And not only that, but she lit a fire in me to do something with Eastern medicine. She fed my hunger for information and 
pointed me towards resources and fielded thousands of questions when I would go in for my appointments because I was fascinated by what was happening and that my body could regain control of itself. I was feeling stronger. I was sleeping better. I didn't have any bleeding problems. My cycle was regulating itself. It felt like magic to me. And I wanted to be part of that magic. And she's actually the one who planted the acutonic seed in my mind 10 years ago. And it's taken a decade for it to come to fruition. But, you know, all of these little moments along my journey have shaped me into the practitioner that I am today. So I got my body into a really healthy place. There were some life transitions that took place in my life. And acupuncture and herbs had made me strong enough to weather all of them. And I felt the best that I had felt in my whole life. And then I met the love of my life. And after we had been together for a few years, we decided, hey, maybe we'll try to have a baby. And my work was crazy at that point in time. Again, trying to be that perfectionist and take on the world and show the world that I could do everything a man could do because I've always been that personality. Like, show me something I can't do. Oh, wait, hold my beer. <laughs> I will figure this out with a backflip and a twist. Buckle up. Like, I've always been that person. And so working in a male-dominated field at that point in my life, I worked, I feel like, double time to prove that I could do everything that my male counterparts could do and then some, and at the detriment of my health. At one point, I was working over 70 hours a week and was starting to lose my lunch breaks because the demands of the job required me to pretty much work every waking second of my day, which was harder and harder and harder on my body. And my cycles were really erratic. When my husband and I decided to try and have a baby and after three miscarriages, I still wasn't totally looking at the breadth of the quote unquote damage that I had done to my body by ignoring the fact that I'm a cyclical being and I, cause I would just push myself through, I could willpower my way through just about anything. Does anybody resonate with that? And so I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And I went back to acupuncture. I had taken a slight reprieve because I had moved and needed to establish with a new caretaker. And we were tracking my basal temps and finding that they just weren't getting up high enough. And that's why I was miscarrying. And so now I had a piece of information that I thought was really great, but all at the same time, I was still doing what everyone else does going to their gynecologist and saying, hey, I'd like to have a baby. Yes, we've been trying for six months and we are by definition struggling with our fertility at this point and we need help. So two failed IUIs that were not handled well and escalated up to the IVF route. And I think one of the most heartbreaking moments of my journey was getting to the IVF doctor's office. And this was supposed to be the guy with all the answers, right? And that's not at all what I found. He threw himself down in a big leather chair across a pretentious desk and laughed. He didn't even say, hi, my name is, like no pleasantries, nothing. Threw himself down in that chair across that desk and laughed, started with laughter, which of course, like, hello, have you forgotten that I'm a human being that has now lost several babies and this is a very emotionally sensitive topic for me? I understand you do this day in and day out, but a little emotional sensitivity would go a long way here. And while he was laughing, he goes, well, your test results are fine. Your husband's test results are fine because we had both gone through a litany of tests. I had had so many vials of blood drawn that I thought I was going to faint the morning that they did it. Like I had had a ton of diagnostics done to see like just what is going on here. And he's like, your results are fine. His results are fine. All your levels are where they're supposed to be. I don't understand why you can't get pregnant, but we can do IVF with ICSI. And then he got up and just left the room for his nurse to come in and scoop me up and pick up the rest of the pieces. And I'm like, what is ICSI? 
What do you mean you want to start me on birth control? Have you all missed the fact that I had a heart attack on birth control? Like, read a freaking chart, people. So I had this, like, overwhelm of information that followed afterwards, all provided by the nurse. All the questions that I had was done in typical doctor's office fashion. Here, get tell me what it is that you want. I'll ask the doctor. I'll get an answer back to you. Well, shit, why couldn't he have just sat down and actually made eye contact with me for the first five minutes he was in the room and actually answered my questions? Like, why do we now have to play a big game of telephone? So I got out to my car and I remember vividly sitting in the front seat of my car, staring at the wheel. And I had probably the ugliest cry, one of the ugliest cries at that point, probably the ugliest one I had had. But I had a super ugly cry in the front seat of my car and it like came from my soul (laughs) because this was supposed to be the guy with all of the answers and he's telling me everything's fine, but clearly something is not fucking fine because I have lost three babies. What do you mean things are fine? So then I went back to an infertility program where we were doing timed intercourse and then there was meds and trigger shots and like I got chemically pregnant but it didn't gestate and so we just kind of gave up for a while now through this whole process I learned how to optimize fertility in a really important way and for both partners because my husband had had an illness and we had to work through how that affected his vital sign because his semen analysis was not optimal for a period of time. So through this whole journey, I have learned through firsthand experience what the medical process looks like, how all of those diagnostic tests feel, what they look like, I have learned what it feels like and what it looks like to have a miscarriage. I've had seven throughout the course of my fertility journey, and I can meet my clients in that space. I know how their hearts ache because mine has too. I know how discouraging it is to be trying for years and have nothing to show for it. I know what it's like to have period problems that run your life and you feel like surgery may be the only option, but you know from experience of those around you that surgery doesn't always fix things. And so I share this story with you because I want you to know that I've been there. I have been in the experience that many of you are living. and. I started Moon Essence, I started Reproductive Rebel because I knew that if I was asking these questions, other people were too. If I was experiencing these heartaches, other people were too. And if I could keep one other person from feeling the way that I did, I knew I had done something good in the world. And I put all of my heartache and all of that passion to keep others from the same experiences that I did into creating this practice, into creating this podcast, because you deserve to have a resource for answers. You deserve to have your voice heard. You deserve to have a clinician make eye contact with you and really, truly see you. You can't find that in all places, but it is something that I take very much to heart, that you deserve to know what's going on inside your body. You deserve to be able to make educated decisions around what happens to your body and in your body. You deserve to have the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to be in the driver's seat of your life, to make choices that are going to help support what you want in your life. 
maybe that's not fertility. Maybe that is making lifestyle changes now because you know that women in your family have really struggled with perimenopause and menopause, and you don't want to struggle with that phase of your life. Whatever it is, because I'm stepping into that perimenopausal stage of my life right now, and oh, the heartache stories that I could tell you about people who are truly suffering in this phase that is supposed to bring you so much renewal and hit the reset button on your health and help you to thrive in the later years of your life. That's what menopause is supposed to be. If you have been listening to this program, you know it is one of your golden opportunities to hit the reset button on your health. And there are are millions of women right now that are hitting this late 30s, early 40s stage of their life right now and going, holy shit, what is happening inside of my body? And so while my focus, I'm really good with fertility and I've solved this problem for a lot of people and I've helped them welcome these little bundles of joy, these little miracles into their arms. And every single one of those positive pregnancy tests makes my heart sing because it's another person that was kept from the heartache that I felt. And it's another person who is able to realize a dream that they were starting to lose faith in. That is why I'm here. And I feel it so deeply in my body that the work that I'm doing has the power to transform people's lives. For you to feel empowered and for you to feel like the strong smart, beautiful, empowered goddess that you deserve to feel like every day. That you are in, like, I know I keep saying the driver's seat of your bus, but that's really what it is. So many of us feel like our symptoms run the fucking show and they don't have to. They don't have to. I'm here to show you how they don't have to. I'm here to teach you about your body and what it's trying to tell you because all of these symptoms that we experience are literally our body's way of saying, hey, there is something that I need more love and support with here. And the symptom that comes up points to what is going on, what is being asked for additional resources and support. And my goal is to teach you what your body is telling you, whether that's for fertility, whether that is regulating your cycle so that you're not miserable every month, whether that is helping you to make a smooth transition as you get into your later years, whatever it is, whatever your goals are, I am here for you every step of the fucking way because we deserve that. We deserve to feel like the badass boss babes and mompreneurs and stay-at-home moms and whatever your chosen mission is in your life, you deserve to feel like you control your life and not that your body is limiting you from the fullest expression of who you are. And what you're supposed to have in this life. Don't let your body stand in the way of that. It doesn't have to. So I share this very vulnerable. And as you can tell, I've been wiping tears if you're listening to the audio of this as I've been talking about this. Because I feel it so deeply in my soul. This work, teaching you how to be the commander of your own ship. See, I needed something other than a bus driver, okay? (laughs) But empowering you with this information transforms lives, transforms your life because you deserve it. 
You deserve it. And it is the reason I get out of bed every single morning. It is the reason that I record this podcast every single week because I am genuinely hoping from the depths of my soul that there is a gem in what it is that I'm showing up and sharing every week that is going to help you to transform your life because you deserve that. Step into your calling, step into your purpose, and you can do that when you're in an embodied place and you're in right relationship with your body. Everything flows. Thank you so much for listening to this program for being a part of this community, for trusting in me as a person and as a practitioner that you turn to every week for information. I literally share all of this from my heart and from my soul because there are so many of us that suffer and it's time to change that story because that's all it is, is a story. And it doesn't have to be your story. I love you all. I'm so grateful that you're here and I am passionate about women's health and helping women to live their best lives. And I'm so grateful that you've joined me on this journey so that I can help you live your best and most vibrant life. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Reproductive Rebel. Reproductive Rebel is recorded by certified peri steam hydrotherapist and acutonics practitioner, herbalist, and Chinese nutritional therapist, Adrian Irizarry of Moon Essence LLC. If you are interested in setting up an appointment for one-on-one support, ordering from our store, or checking out our course offerings, visit our website at moonessence.life. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and get insider information on upcoming events and offerings. Join the conversation, like and follow us at Moon Essence Me on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Your voices make this program possible. Thank you all for your continued support.